Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. In this video, we are going to look into some very common differences between component, service, repository, controller. These are some very common stereotype permutations of Spring Spring Boot. They might do the same thing, that is to create the bean out of your class, but there are significant differences also present in these particular annotations. So in this video, we are going to look into those hidden tricky differences between these annotations. Please do like, share and subscribe so that this video ra ranks better in the YouTube algorithm and it reaches to more of the people preparing for interviews like you. So let's get started. Hey guys, uh, recently we have launched a course covering an end-to-end -end full stack application using Angular as front end and microservices and Spring Boot as the back end. Also, we have used Cloud to deploy this application and we have used CI CD that is Jenkins and Argo CD for continuous integration and continuous deployment. The technologies that we have used is REST RESTful Web Services, Spring Boot and Microservices for backend, Angular for frontend, GitHub we have used for version control system. Also to make the code unit testable, we have used JUnits. We have used Sonar for code quality checks. Also for containerization, we have used Docker and Kubernetes. And to deploy this whole application, we have used AWS and multiple services from AWS. Also, we have used SQL as well as NoSQL, that is MongoDB and SQL. On AWS, since for the SQL, we have RDS, we have used those services and Jenkins and Argo CD for CI CD pipeline. Also, this is an architecture of the application that we have created where the front end is Angular and the back end is microservices. We have used ALB load balancers, Ingress for routing and load balancing. And we have used SQL and MongoDB for SQL and NoSQL DB management with Eureka server and all those microservices counterparts. Now, this is the CI CD pipeline. This is the CI CD flowchart for the application that we have created on local. So, this is something a flow when you create an application in local, push it to GitHub, create a Jenkins pipeline, and do the CI CD uh, using Jenkins and Argo CD. And at the end, deploy the whole code at AWS EKS. Complete description of this course is covered in a very separate video. The link for that video is also given in the description bar below. And also the link to purchase that course from Udemy is also in the description bar below. So please go and check the description for all these links. The first thing, what are these annotations? The spring annotations are just the metadata about a particular class or a program. They just provide some additional information to the class. Basically, they do not have any direct effect on the operations of how code actually works. They do not change any of the compiled code actions. What they do is they just provide some metadata. Now, at the rate component, at the rate service, at the rate repository, and at the rate controller, all these are Spring or Spring Boot stereotype annotations. Now, we understand what is annotation, just the metadata, nothing else. But what are stereotype annotations? Stereotype annotations are something very different from the simple annotations in Spring Spring Boot. A stereotype annotation is a special label or a tag that we, the developers, put on a class to tell the Spring that something is very special about this class and this class has some special purpose. These annotations helps the program to understand how to treat and use these classes. They are like quick notes that you attach to a class providing some extra information on each class about what it is actually meant to do in the real application. For example, at the rate service is to provide some business logic, at the rate repository is to do some database connections, at the rate controller is to handle your web request and at the rate component is a generic stereotype which is a parent of all these three stereotypes that is service repository and controller. So you can see at the rate component is parent, at the rate service, repository and controller are children. How can I prove you this? I will prove you this in some very real time example. So you can see this is at the rate component. This is at the rate interface is actually the way to make this component an annotation. So this annotation is the parent annotation. Now why do I say this is parent? Because it is going to be aliased for repository, service and controller. Let's see that. So in the iterate repository, this is basically an alias for component.class. That means it's basically a child of iterate component. By default, iterate repository is annotated by iterate component. Hence, it is just the child of component. It will do everything a component can do. What can a component do? A component can create a bean in the spring container 
whenever you are annotating any class with at the rate component which is coming in the component scan. So at the rate repository will also create a bean because at the rate component can create the bean at the rate repository will also create the bean. So at the rate repository is just the specialization of at the rate component. Now what special at the rate repository can do I'll tell you in the upcoming few minutes that it can convert your checked exception to runtime exception that is the specific specialization a repository annotation can do apart from what at the rate component can do. Similarly, at the rate service is also an alias for component dot class because it is also annotated with at the rate component. Again, there is no specific advice attached to this particular at the rate service annotation. It is just as good as at the rate component. Similarly, at the rate rest controller is also a at the rate controller at the rate Controller is nothing but a at the rate component. So basically at the rate rest controller is also included with at the rate component and hence it is an alias for not just a controller class but also for the component class. So it's a super parent for a rest controller. So rest controller is nothing but a specification for controller and also for the component. So basically rest controller is nothing but a component super specialized one but what it can do, it can explicitly handle all your HTTP requests and responses. So these, these three are the specific specializations of component class where component being the parent can do some specific task like creating a bean. What specialization repository can do? Convert your, translate your checked exception to runtime exception. And what specialization a rest controller can do to handle your HTTP requests and responses. There is no specification for service class. You can interchangeably use both of them. They will work the same. That was more about the practical way. Now let's go through some theory because in interviews, we might have to face some theory questions. So how Spring treats these stereotype annotations differently? So Spring treats these stereotype annotations very different from another annotation. Now I'll give you quickly example of stereotype annotation. That is at the rate component, at the rate service, at the rate repository, at the rate controller. I'll give you examples for simple annotations which are not the stereotype annotation for Spring that is at the rate request mapping, at the rate auto wire and many more. So these annotations are completely different from stereotype annotations. Now how are they different? They are different in two aspects, component scanning and bean creation. Component scan when is done on a particular class and if it finds a stereotype annotation like these being annotated over the class during the component scan, then they automatically register these classes as spring bean in component scan process. Why the other non-stereotype annotations or custom annotations generally do not trigger the automatic bean registration. What does that automatic bean registration means? It means that during the component scan, the beans are searched and created as a spring bean in container. During the component scanning, the at the rate auto wire will not create a bean. At the rate request mapping will not create a bean. For example, here in REST demo controller, if I just use at the rate request mapping and remove the REST controller, this is not going to create a bean and your endpoint will not be hit. So let me try doing that. It has started. I try to hit it with employee ID 1. It says not found. So what it says is the request mapping will not create a bean. So what you have to specially do is you have to annotate it with the rest controller, which internally is a specialization for controller, which internally is a specialization for component and component creates beans automatically during the component scan. So where, where do you have the component scan? In the spring boot annotation, you have component scan. You can see this is a component scan. And this is in com code decode res demo and dot controller is the child. So by default, this is also doing the comp. This is also a class which is being component scanned by the container. So by default, this res controller when used is capable enough to handle your HTTP request from responses. So it has started and we have annotated with res controller. So bean should be created for res demo controller. Let's try hitting it and yes, it's successful. It's 200. Okay. So at the rate rest controller automatically registers this class as a bean and spring container. 
while the another annotations which are not stereotype for example request mapping will not create the bean of this automatically and since the bean is not created this get mapping is not registered as a endpoint and hence your request and responses are 404 not found so these are how the stereotype annotations work differently they automatically are registered as the spring beans if any class is annotated with these four during a component scan process. All right, the other non zero type annotations like request mapping will not trigger the automatic bean registration and hence your endpoints will not be registered and hence you will not be able to bypass your request and response. The stereotype annotations are explicitly considered during component scanning. I've already told you how component scan is done on the rest demo application that is a main class you have a great spring boot application which internally has component scanning for all the child packages of the parent package and since this controller becomes the child of this parent package it is by default is in the component scan so in during the component scan if it finds any stereotype annotation like risk controller controller component scan component service or repository they look the spring look for these classes with these annotations and they treat them differently how differently they are treated if they find these they will create a bean of this class in the container while the another annotations are not going to trigger the automatic registration and these special treatments also with these stereotype annotations you do not have to explicitly create a bean using xml configurations or configuration at the rate bean they are automatically created so if i would not be able to create it with at the rate rest controller how a bean was created initially you create it in xml how with a bean tag bean id equals to rest demo controller class equals to com dot code decode rest demo demo controller demo controller this is how you used to create a bean using the xml configuration or you would have used the bean creation using at the rate bean with a class annotated with at the rate configuration to remove all those boilerplate codes the very simple way to do it with just one single annotation is at the rate rest controller that is why i say that these stereotype annotations are very different from the simple annotations in the spring spring boot because they prevent you from doing the bean creation using these xml and configuration at the rate configuration at the rate bean type of configuration so this is how you are prevented from creating the boilerplate code to create beans. While if you don't want to use risk controller like this and you just want to have the request mapping, this will not create a bean. If you want to now create a bean for this, you either have to use the XML based configuration or at the rate configuration class with at the rate bean on the method level. So in summary, Spring treats stereotype annotations really different from the other annotations by providing them special role. Now you say that these are just annotations, but if you can see, these are not just metadata or annotations. These actually tell Spring what to do. During component scan, create a bean of it. So this is a metadata and an instruction to Spring that please create my bean in Spring container whenever these four stereotype annotations comes into picture during a component scan. These annotations are designed to make your life easy and very straightforward by minimizing the boilerplate code you would have done by XML configurations or at the rate configurations. They play a very key role in automatic discovery and management of bean within the spring container by automatically creating them as a bean into it. Now, what are some examples of non-stereotype annotations? I've given you one already. At the rate request mapping is a non-stereotype non annotation. It is used for handling the request and at the rate auto wire is just a non stereotype annotation because it is not for creating a bean. It is for dependency management, dependency injection in Spring. Thus, when Spring sees these annotations, it does not create the bean automatically. Rather, it will just do some specific task which these annotations are required to do. Like at the, at the rate auto wire is actually advising your container that please inject the dependency of this bean in the parent bean. So these annotations are metadata and also some specific rules that you give the spring to do whenever these classes are annotated with these particular specific annotations.
Now let's quickly see about these four annotations. I told you like the right component is a parent or the generic stereotype annotation. This whenever declared on any of the class will create a bean and spring container. Whenever a class under the component scan path is annotated with this, it will be automatically registered in the spring context. You can use such instances with at the rate auto wire to inject these dependencies in any of the other classes also. Until unless you do not create a bean, you cannot inject its dependency in, in any other bean. So this is the very basic component which you have to use if you want to auto wire and inject its dependency in any other bean. For example, in a student and an address, student should have an address. So student should auto wire an address class. But if address is not annotated with either at the rate component or the rate that service at the rate repository at the rate trace controller, the bean will not be present with the con container. And if the bean is not there, how will it inject into any other student class? To have it in the class, student class, you have to have the bean in the container. So these four stereotypes are responsible for creating your bean and container. Then only it will be available to other classes through at the rate auto wire annotation. The next is at the rate service annotation. It is just a stereotype for creating a bean of a class in container. And if you read a source code, you will see that this is just a place where you can put the business logic. Now, you, what, what is the dif difference? There is no difference in at the rate component and at the rate service. Technically also, stereotype, just these are just to create the beans. There is no such any special feature till now added by Spring people or Spring Boot people to this annotation. This is just as good as this. This is just the decoration that you can do on your class that the business logic exists here. But that is not case with the other annotations. For example, at the rate controller, at the rate rest controllers are the specializations of at the rate component only to create a beam in the container. But it is also an annotation to handle your HTTP request and responses. Now a very important difference. I told you that at the rate service is just at the rate component. So you can switch where you are putting the logic business logic. You can remove that uh, annotation at the rate service and put at the rate component. No difference will be made in your system, but you cannot do that switch with at the rate rest controller. I'll give you a live demo also. I have told you that with at the rate rest controller, you cannot make a switch. This is internally is going to have nothing but a at the rate component. So it should be same as at the rate component. So if I remove this at the rate controller and I make it as at the rate I remove this at the rate rest controller and I rather annotate it with at the rate component. Will it still behave as a bean? Yes, this bean will be created. But will it still be able to handle your HTTP request and responses? Answer will be no. Initially, I was able to have this response as 200 OK. But now if I restart it, it will give you 404 because this class is no more capable to handle your HTTP request and responses. Let's try this and the answer is 404 not found. Why? Because this class is no more capable enough to handle your request responses. Because you have annotated it with component, it will just create a bean. But it will not be a specialization of component. That is at the rate controller, at the rate rest controller. These specialization adds a special feature in these beans to make the spring understand that these are the HTTP request response handleable classes. So if they are able to handle, they will be able to respond also. If you're not making this, then you're, you will not be able to get the response to it. So at the rate rest controller is a specialization of component where you create the bean, but also make the class capable enough to handle request and responses. So you, these are, this is where the switch is not possible. So this is a very big difference between all these annotations. You can switch at the rate service, at the rate repository, at the rate component interchangeably. No difference will be there. But you cannot switch between at the rate com controller, at the rate rest controller. This is a very tricky and hidden uh, difference. Many of the people won't know. The next very important difference with at the rate repository annotation. Now again, these are also an interchangeably can be used by at the rate component, but the problem will be that whenever you have some exception, like SQL exception, 
you will have to explicitly handle it using try catch. Now I'll tell you what is the difference. So what is aggregate repository annotation? It is annotation which is given to a class which can hold the database of persistent logic. What does that mean? Whenever your system has to do some database interaction, that class specifically who is going to interact with your database is annotated with this exerate repository. In other words, a DTO and DAO is annotated with repository. Data transfer object or data access objects are actually annotated with exerate repository. Now, this is just an alias for component, but there is one significant benefit which is given to you when you use the exerate repository. That is, it enables the Spring's exception translation mechanism. Remember these three words, these are very important. Exception, translation, mechanism. That's the capability of Spring to translate your checked exception to runtime exception. The mechanism catches the checked exception like SQL exception and translate them to a runtime exception like data access exception. Now, why is it done? Why is it done for you? Now, what do you know about the checked exception? Whenever you you write some code to access the data from the database, if it gives you the checked exception like SQL exception, then you have to write a try and catch and put a code to handle your checked exceptions. Like the database connection lost, database is not visible, database is timed out. Many such exceptions you have to put as a user exception through as a user exception or handle it. To prevent such boilerplate cloud, you are given aggregate repository annotation. What it will do is it will intercept your code whenever the checked exception comes and converts it into runtime exception so that you don't have to write the try catch block. So these can make the exception handling more convenient in the context of data access. The exception translation mechanism happens automatically. So this is a boon to a developer's life. Whenever you use the Edgarit repository, you don't have to write any code. It will automatically do the AOP. That is, it will intercept each and every request you do to the database. And if the checked exception like SQL exception comes, it automatically translates it to data access exception and you are prevented from using any boilerplate code in your own code to do the try and catch. Who is responsible for this? The persistent exception translation post processor is responsible for this. I'll show that class also to you. This is persistent exception translation processor, which is responsible to do the AOP proxy. That is to intercept all your request, which is annotated with Edgarit repository to handle your data access. And if checked exception comes, translate that exception. So this exception itself says, translate the exception to runtime exception. How it works? It is responsible for an adding an AOP advice to the method annotated with the repository. It automatically translates, that means it, it adds the advice, it intercepts the method execution. If the method throws checked exception, like SQL exception, it is translated into data access exception, that is runtime exception. Now, the exception is not gone. Exception is just converted from checked exception to runtime exception. That means you do not have to write try catch, but that doesn't mean the exception is gone at all. It means that it is just like null pointer exception. It can come anytime in your code. So your task is to handle it properly. So whenever you write a code which is handling the data access, just write the try catch with data access exception. Do not write any code to handle your Check multiple checked exceptions like SQL exception, file exceptions, IO exceptions. You do not have to handle all such checked exceptions. All these checked exceptions will be similarly cached and will be thrown as data access exception. And only one exception you have to catch that is data access exception. So it doesn't explicitly catch the translated runtime exception. It will propagate to call stack if you are not capable enough to handle the data access exception. The higher level code, that is the one who is handling the iterate service, that is controller class, should be capable enough to handle your runtime exceptions. And if it doesn't do that, then your code will be broken. So in summary, iterate component, iterate service, iterate repository, iterate controller, iterate trace controller, they all do the same thing. That is to create the bean, but at a different level. 
So if they are doing the same thing, why not do all the things at the same level with the same layers? That is like the red component. Can't we use it across all the layers? Across service layer, across repository layer, across controller layer, across creation of bean at the red component layer. Why not use component everywhere? With at the red service, it is fine because Spring people have not given any decoration to at the red service. But it is not the same with at the red repository, at the red controller because Spring people have given some minor differences. As an addition to accurate repository, accurate controller, the AOP aspects will add the conversion of the checked exceptions, all the checked exceptions, to runtime exception, and you just have to handle one runtime exception and not the multiple checked exceptions. That is the added value that is given by Spring people to you for accurate repository. And similarly, something similar is given as I've shown you in the demo. Also, is given as the HTTP request handling capability, which is added to at the rate controller, at the rate trace controller, which is not with the at the rate component. So yes, at the end, all these four or five uh, annotations do the same thing, creation of bean. But not just that, they do some extra things also with at the rate repository, at the rate controller, not with at the rate service as of now. But later on, there can be a chance that additional features will be added to the at the rate service as the time passes by with the with upcoming spring versions you might see some added features as the business rules added to at the rate service also as of now there is no difference with at the rate component at the rate service these are completely the same just the decoration you can do to your classes to see yes it is having the business rules no technical internal differences with at the rate service at the rate component but yes at the rate repository, at the rate controller are completely different from at the rate component with some special features added. So quickly some differences. Uh, at the rate component is a general purpose. At the rate service is service layer. At the rate repository is DAO layer. At the rate controller is MVC layer. Specialization of none. This is a parent because this is a parent. While at the rate service repository and controller are going to have some parent that is at the rate component. The typical use of at the rate company is a general purpose bean creation. While at the rate service is used for the business logic creation, data access has to be interaction with the database, then you have to use at the rate repository. While at the rate controller is used to handle your web request. Now, exception handling, no specific exception translation is there. Only one person is able to give you the exception translation, that is the at the rate repository. Also, there is a switch possible between at the rate component and at the rate service because they both are the same. Similarly, at the rate repository and at the rate component also can be switched, but just the only difference, you will not be able to catch all your checked exception, will not be converted to the runtime exception. Also, but a switch is for sure not possible with at the rate controller and at the rate rest controller. Why? Because if you switch it, it will lose its essence. It will not be able to handle your HTTP request and response at all. So do not switch between component service repository with controller. It has some specific thing to do. You can do a switch between these three, not a problem. Also with at the rate repository, we lose the benefit of translation, but at the rate component service remains a complete same. So that was all about differences between these annotations. I have one more very important difference to cover. That is the difference between at the rate component and at the rate B. While both of them do the same thing, the bean creation, but there's a significant difference between them. If you want to know the difference between at the rate component and at the rate bean, just let me know in the comment section. I'll give the video on that also. Thank you.